Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Carter Sirach. I'm the productive dude here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm just going to give you a quick first impression of ClickUp and I'm gonna run through what your first day on ClickUp might look like. This can be a confusing software when you're first getting started, at least it was for me. But with this video, you're going to have some added clarity when it comes to using ClickUp to track your tasks. Uh, now, ClickUp can be used for both personal uh, scenarios where you're just working on your own, but it's also really, really stellar for teams. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pricing and what you can expect with that in a minute here. The first thing that I do have to bring up is the ClickUp hierarchy. So the ClickUp hierarchy is kind of confusing when you're first getting started, but I'm gonna break it down and make it super easy for you guys. So let's jump right into my computer. So within ClickUp, we have workspaces, spaces, lists, folders, tasks, subtasks, and nested subtasks. I'm gonna make this really simple. Let's start with workspace. The workspace is your overall account. So this is your where you set your account settings. It's where you set up the different members that you have. This is, this is basically your account. Um, and then within your account, you can have different siloed off spaces. So these spaces could be anything from businesses to departments in your business to classes that you have for your upcoming semester. These spaces could really be any sort of taxonomy that you wanna uh, put them into. One other thing to note about spaces is that these can be shared with your members however you want to divvy that up. So you can have members that have access to a full workspace, but then you can also delegate specific spaces so that they're private to certain members and so that other members can see them. So this can be useful if you're in a company and you have like a marketing team, maybe you make a space for marketing, and then maybe you have a finance team, you can make a space for finance and just give access to uh, you know, whoever needs access for those particular spaces. Lists can kind of be thought of as projects um, because they contain tasks. And that's the main purpose of a list is to hold different tasks within it. If you need multiple levels of tasks, that's why they have the subtask and nested subtask here. Like if you wanted to, you could have a list which is like a general area, and then you could have a task, which could be like a project, a subtask within it, which is, an, which is a deliverable maybe, and then a nested subtask, which could be the actual brass tacks, the actual action that you're taking. Uh, the other nice thing is they have these folders. I don't want this to kind of confuse you guys. It should make things simpler, but you can put these lists into folders if you want to organize them in any particular way or categorize them somehow. Now let's talk about pricing with ClickUp. Like I was saying earlier, if you're a solopreneur or you're just a student, the free plan should work just fine. Unless you're starting to accumulate a ton of storage in there, um, they do have a 100 megabyte limit on the free plan, but they do have tons of great features in the free plan. So if you are a solopreneur, crack into that, use it, and then maybe upgrade to the next tier, uh, the $5 per month if you go on the yearly. Uh, if you do want to get that extra space and maybe unlimited integrations and a few other features added on. Now, if you do have a team, I would highly recommend going with one of the top two tiers um, or contacting their support to figure out what works best for you. Um, because for teams, you know, ClickUp can get really advanced and uh, it can be really useful, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the right plan that suits your needs. The cool thing is, is you can scale with ClickUp. Uh, you can change your plan later on if you really want to. I'm happy to say that I also have a 20% off discount code for ClickUp. Worked with ClickUp to get this for you guys. So if you do wanna sign up for ClickUp, and support this channel using the affiliate link in the description, you can do so and they'll give you a nice 20% off discount. I did make sure to ask them if they could give me a better discount if they would. And currently they said 20% is the best deal that they're running. So they gave me that 20% discount and I just wanted to relay that onto you guys. So definitely use that link in the description if you wanna get access to ClickUp at a discounted rate. All right, so this is what your ClickUp workspace is going to look like when you first open it up. This is the overall workspace area. And if I click on the spaces tab here, you're gonna see that I can add a new space. Okay, so if I wanted to add a new space within this, I could do so. I could give it a name 
and I could go through that process. I'm gonna do that in a minute, but the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you open up ClickUp is edit some of these base settings out of the box. So if I go down to this little drop down arrow down here, click on that, and then I go to my settings, I'm gonna want to make sure that I set the color theme that I want. I can come up here and set the space color as well. Um, no, there's tons of different colors that I can save and change it to. Uh, if I wanted to, I could even go with this hot pink color. Wow, that's cool. Okay, I can hit save changes when I'm ready on that. There is two-factor authentication that you can set up. Language and region settings, pretty uh, standard. You can come down here and turn on high contrast mode or dark mode or both, whatever you want. Uh, the black does not look that great on dark mode, but if I changed it to like one of these bright colors, boom, that's super nice. Let me know in the comments below, are you a dark mode fan or a light mode fan? I need to know because I'm kind of impartial. Honestly, I, I usually leave it to the system settings to decide, but um, yeah, just let me know, are you a dark mode fan or a light mode fan? And while you're at it, if you are gonna send any good signals to the algorithm, please drop a quick like really appreciate it. There's tons of changes that you can make in here. There's lots that you can mess around with. Um, but the next section that I would really pay attention to is the notifications section. So here is where you can set the different notifications uh, for different devices. And you can also set up smart notifications, which offers a delayed sending. So you get a little bit of a buffer on your notifications. I would come in here and make sure that you have these configured how you want them. Uh, just because this is, uh, it, it can be quite a few notifications if you just leave all of these selected by default. The next section to look at is the click apps section. If anything, this is just really fun to look at and to see all the different features that you can enable if you ever need them on ClickUp. I mean, they've created an entire Loom replacement that records your screen for you. They've replaced Google Docs with collaborative editing tool. Uh, they've got this automation tool that's coming in. So they've got tools for everything. And the nice thing is, is not everyone needs these. So you can turn these on or off based on your needs. Pretty cool. There's a lot more we could dig into. We could go into our people, our teams. Uh, we could edit a lot of these settings, but for right now, I'm going to go back and we're gonna create our first space. So when you're creating a new space, you might get this pop-up if you don't have any spaces created already. I'm just gonna close this. In case you didn't get that pop-up, you can just hit new space and that's how you get to this, okay? And then you can give it a name. So I'm going to give this one a name of Humways. I'm gonna hit next and I'm gonna select our agency's colors and the little icon for the Humways section. And here we can decide who we wanna share this with. So if we wanna share this with our entire workspace, all of our members, we can just leave this default workspace selected. If we want it to be private so that only certain members can work in this space, we can hit this private button. And then you can add the people that you want right there. Just hit next. This is where you decide what types of statuses you want for your tasks. So I'm gonna go with the Kanban. I already pre-created this one. Uh, it has stuck, in progress, and to do, and the active statuses. So these mean that the task is still in progress, essentially. Uh, in some way or another. It might be stuck, it might be in progress, it might be a to -do, on your to-do list, but the point is it's not done, it's still active. You can also create a done section so that when you select this status, it will indicate that your task is done and you're ready to move on to any dependent tasks that you have down the pipeline. A closed status, complete, means that it will completely make this task disappear uh, and it will kind of archive it, if you will. I don't have a done task right now and I don't need a done task because uh, if my tasks are done, I'm just gonna hit complete and they can disappear. And that's fine with my current setup. And here's where you can decide which click apps you want for your specific space that you're creating. So I'm gonna go through and read on each of these, which ones I wanna keep. And I'm just gonna select those really quick. Once you're done, hit next. Next, you can decide on which kind of views you want for your different lists. I'm just gonna go with the board and the list view. That's the default. Uh, let's set the board as the default though. I like the boards better for tasks in my opinion. I'm gonna hit review space. And this is a really cool feature. It allows you to see all of the changes that you're about to make to the space. I really like this final feature here because it gives you a chance to make sure all of your settings got put in correctly. You shared it with all the correct users, no more or no less. And you hit review changes, create space. 
boom, now we've got a Humways space. And it's going to create our first list underneath that as well. Okay, lists can be color coded. So we can add or edit these colors here. So right now I've got one for internal, one for clients. I could create another one that tags this in some way if I wanted to. I'm not going to right now, I don't see a use. Um, but let's just go ahead and start creating a template for future clients because I'm going to actually create a folder under this Humways space that holds all of our client to-do lists. So this is going to be the new folder. We're gonna call it clients. I'm gonna hit create folder. And then you'll notice that it has another list in here. I'm gonna delete that list. I don't necessarily need that. Um, but this list right here, we're going to use as our template, okay? so. What happens when we get a new client? We have to onboard them, right? So let's just add in some tasks that are gonna be the same across every client so that in the future, this can be a template that we just add whenever a new client comes on board. First things first, they're going to need to pay the invoice. So ensure client has paid the invoice, save. Next item on the list is going to be ensure client has signed the contract. The next item is going to be send the welcome email. So now we have these three to-dos that are going to be the same across all of our client campaigns in the future. What I'm going to do next is make sure I set up my dependencies. So the thing is, is we don't wanna send this welcome email until uh, the client has paid the invoice and they've signed the contract. So in order to set up a dependency, we need to go to these three dots, hit dependencies, and then under blocking, we can add a task that is blocked. So we need to make sure that we add the task of send welcome email. So if I hit done, you'll notice that now this is the blocking dependency, meaning we need to complete this task before it allows us to move on to this one. I also wanna make sure that the client has signed the contract. So I'm going to set up a dependency for that as well, blocking. So now these tasks need to be completed before we can move on to this one. Next, I'm just gonna click the settings button here and we're going to turn this into a template. I'm gonna hit save as template and the template name is going to be default new client. And I'll put onboarding in parentheses there. I want this to be available to all members. I don't want public sharing on, and I wanna import everything. So I'm gonna hit save. That looks good. Now let's start creating some clients in here. I'm gonna hit plus, new list, and we're gonna give this list a name. Hit create list. Next, you're gonna hit this list settings button. Scroll down to template center. Go to browse templates. And we're gonna find that default new client template that I just created. Okay, so now I can hit use template. We can give it a name. So whatever the client's name is going to be, let's just say uh, THI. I'm just gonna use some abbreviations for some of my uh, client names. Uh, THI, import everything, import as is. Do you wanna include archive tasks? No, there aren't any to worry about anyways, but I'm gonna hit use template now. Now that that is created, I can get rid of this little hello task and we have THI here, which should be based upon that template. Yep, as you can see, those tasks are just loading in and it is loading in for clients, THI. So if I wanted to, I could continue adding more and more clients using the template center, browse templates, default new client, use template. I could add my next client's name, hit use template. And as you can see, it's going to create the same exact setup here, except it's just a different name for the client, and I can come in here and add tasks that are independent of the other clients. So if I had a specific one for this TEC client here, start website mockup, I can just add that there by hitting save. And as you can see, it's independent of this other templated client that we've created. Now I'm also really excited about the ClickUp Word Editor. It reminds me a little bit of Notion, and they have some other features in there that they've personally added that have made it great as well. So I'm gonna jump into that and show you how that works really quick. So let's say that I wanted to add a bit of a description here for this welcome email. So I could click into here and I could add a description so that the person who is sending this welcome email, whoever I have assigned to, 
say like Drake here, I could have some text in here that shows them how to send it. So uh, let's just hit slash and I'm going to start typing in info. So that's the blue banner, that's what it's called. The command for this is info. So then I'm gonna click this emoji. We're going to click the email button. And right here, I'm gonna write, this is the email that we have to send to new clients. Copy and paste this template and make sure to fill it out properly. And right here, I could just start typing out the emails. That is kind of how I could set that up if I wanted this user to come in here, see what's going on and just basically take this and use it. Um, if you highlight it, as you can see, you can also use these different text decorations, which is pretty neat. Let me show you a few other things that this text editor can do. If I hit slash and I scroll down, as you can see, there are just normal text editing functions that it has. So you can do like different headings, you can do these different banners, quotes, uh, website links, all sorts of different things. You can change the background color. Uh, you can also embed different embeds. So this is a custom embed if you already have some code that you wanna embed. Um, but there are like YouTube, Loom, Miro, Google Drive. I'll probably use all of those in here. Uh, the other section that they have now that's new is views. So this is similar to Notion's linked uh, database where you can create a linked database and you can pull in a database from anywhere and it dynamically updates. So if I click on this table view here and I go to browse and then I go into the only list that I do have right here, it's gonna pull that in right here for me, which is pretty neat. And if I wanted to, I could open this up and it would pull that task open right here for me. Now, I don't see a reason for having this list in here, so I am gonna delete it, but I just wanted to show you guys that feature. I can hit slash, and I can also use these little work commands, these little task actions. So one of the cool ones here is assign, and let me just show you how quick this can uh, reassign something. So if I hit slash A for assign, hit enter, and then I can hit unassign, that immediately unassigned it right there. And then if I wanted to reassign it to somebody else, I get it slash A, assign, boom, I could assign it to myself. And as you can see, they have the integrated chat box right here that's just related with a specific task as well. So far, ClickUp has been a blast. I've really started to learn a lot about how to use it and I'm looking forward to creating more in ClickUp. But I just wanted to share my first impressions and a bit of a uh, guide for users that are just entering ClickUp who wanna just learn a little bit about what the ClickUp hierarchy is and also how to utilize templates and just get things done quickly, add new tasks. Um, maybe how to structure things. So hopefully this video helped with just that. I've really enjoyed using ClickUp so far. There are some parallels within it. They remind me a little bit about Notion, but to me, ClickUp seems a little bit better at task management than something like Notion. Uh, and it pulls in some of those features that you do like about Notion, but it also keeps that feel that like a monday.com might have where it's very task oriented. And I really like what they're doing with the Click apps. Uh, where they're adding different features that you can turn on or off based on your needs. These apps are gonna be huge because if I could have all of these in one place, instead of having to jump all over from different browser window to browser window, using different Chrome extensions, using different apps on my computer or on my phone, it just breaks up the workflow. It makes it really inefficient. So it's nice that they're bringing all of this together for us and making their features optional. Sadly, most project management softwares don't let you customize things as much as ClickUp, but that's why, you know, that's why I'm making this video. I think it's a great app. If you do want 20% off of ClickUp, remember to use my affiliate link in the description that will also support this channel. I'm going to be creating some more ClickUp videos and you can access those using the playlist on the left side of your screen. You can also subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.